Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Hearthstone deck guide. I hope you're all having fun trying out various new deck builds. I for myself have tested the Mage Death Knight Frost Lich Jaina over the last couple of days and will present to you an elemental mage deck today that is using the deadly new Jaina as a powerful late game tool. While testing the Mage Death Knight one thing became clear quite fast. I really like the card but in the end the effect is not strong enough to push elemental mage into the top tier. If you look back to the launch of Angora, this archetype saw some play early but fell down a cliff when stronger mage decks were evolving. To make a real elemental deck work, Jaina would have needed to be insanely strong. That is not fully the case, so I feel pretty confident when I say that this archetype will not be the end boss for mage on the ladder. That does not mean that the death knight is bad by any means, just that a pure elemental mage will not be strong enough and we are most likely seeing different versions emerging after more testing. I still have a lot of fun with the deck, hence I still think it is viable choice for you to try out. The deck is of course completely revolving around the elemental tribe which is getting featured in most of the units that we are playing. Most elementals are getting additional effects when you have played elementals in previous turns, so the longer you can chain your elementals in the late game, the better it is for your own sake. That's nice to have, also in the end it all comes down to your death knight and Jaina is truly the reason why we're even considering playing all these elementals in the first place. When your new hero is out, all elementals will have lifesteal until the end of game, plus additionally you are also spawning a ward elemental whenever you're killing a unit with your hero power. That is not only affecting opponent units, but also your own, so never forget about that. Through all that additional life that your elementals will provide for you, it is totally viable to come back from a near dead state back to full life in a single turn. One of the best interactions is the extra damage from Baron Gedon. The old classic card saw not much play recently, but he makes total sense in an elemental mage deck nowadays. The lifesteal will not only take off for every attack, but also through various effects like the area damage by Baron Gedon. As a result, you are able to heal and deal damage at the same time, which is pretty insane indeed. While the life gain with this deck can be simply amazing, I often ran into the problem that the fuel is getting dry the longer the game is going on. That will be a huge problem and is not helping you too much to stay at nearly full life for most of the game just to run out of power later in the most crucial phase. Still, nonetheless, the Death Knight in combination with the Elemental Lifesteal effect is a great game changer and I will show you now what will happen when your opponent is crushing you down to zero but you still want to survive and survive and survive. Alright guys, game one, that is Mage versus Druid. So expect some either Jade Druids I think, Token Druids or also some Taunt Druids are spawning on the ladder recently. And drop that counter spell intellect. Uh, we're keeping the glyph here and the water elemental. Let's see what else we can find. There's a tar creeper and there's Pyrus. So that should be a decent start. Wanna see what he's playing. So nothing on the first turn. There's at least no Jade Idled. Um Yeah, we have the option to just play Pyrus now. And then next turn Glyph into Tar Creeper into Water Elemental. Should be okay. Give us a unit early on and then with the glyph we might find a spell that is killing a unit that he's not dropping. So if you get a frostbolt or something. And the wild growth. Uh, it's not telling us too much. I think wild growth is in nearly every deck. So glyph, ice barrier. We got another glyph here. Definitely picking the glyph here over the other stuff. Fireball for sure. That's two in his face. Fireball for two is always very, very nice. Cannot argue with that. So then Tar Creeper into Water Elemental, I think on the way down we are losing the Pyrus somewhere and then we can play that on turn 6 into the Blaze Caller into the Blaze Caller. That's a very aggressive start then, that's already 10 points of damage, we have the Fireball for another 6, that's 16 damage. So potentially, is he killing that? Yeah, he's killing that. Potentially we can just um, push the damage into the face, depending on what he's playing. So especially if he's, if he's playing a Jade Golems. And if we are taking too long, the game might be over. Darkly but is still into water elemental and now we can also play fireball and can intellect on turn 5, turn 6 and pyros. He's using the nourish um, and taking just the draw. Not getting the extra mana crystals. Has a bunch now in hand, 8 cards total. Counterspell is even better than going Intellect here to be honest, so it will be Fireball and Counterspell on the next turn. 
should help us a lot. He still hasn't ramped too much. There was only one wild growth. So I expect to see more ramp incoming. There's some ramp. Keeper. Uh, we might just cut down the keeper. So we can also, on the other hand, just go face. Just go face into the Tar Creeper. Yep, we are dropping counter spell. Fireball for the face. We are now just going aggressively in the face. Pushing him down to 17. Then Pyro's next turn into Blaze Caller, Blaze Caller. That might even give us a victory here. That's a very, very fast start. Normally you're not going as fast as this one. And if he's not dropping a uh, Feral Rage, that is just getting countered by the counter spell. So if he's looking forward to get some life back with the extra armor. Bone Mare. Okay, that on the other hand is changing our plan a bit. Now Fireball from the top. Yeah, why not, right? Why not? So let's see, that is then still 16. That would be 17 what we need. Let's see, so Pyrus is coming. So then we could just hit this one, play... Could delay this one with the Tar Creeper. So we can hit the Keeper here. Then play Fire Blast next turn. Um, drop another Tar Creeper. And then still go for 6 in the face here. If he's not somehow um, killing the Pyros. I think that's good. Well, this one is frozen. He cannot use that to attack on the next turn. Yeah, this one is just getting countered. No chance for you. So he was using that for a card draw. He would be dealing one damage and then trade. That's not happening here. Keeper. For 2-2 two, two on the board. Ah, damn you. That on the other end sucks totally. Mark of the Lotus buffing every creature on his side, which just means that we are forced to play something different. Frost Lich, uh, yeah, I mean, then we go and Blaze Call and killing this one. Which kind of sucks, to be honest. So definitely wanted to just use that for the face. But if we're not killing the unit, he's pushing too much and we are dead before we can kill him. So very crucial. It really does not look like he's playing with the Jade Golems. So that's then just a, a ramp druid or some ramp taunt druid. Another Norwich, an additional three cards for him. He's very greedy. Sitting that nine cards. Did not found the right one. Innovating for seven and two. What do you have? Oh, the new Malfurion. Okay. That's allowing him to get 3 armor each turn. Of course, he's also getting a bit more armor. He's creating taunts. Which is kind of good for him. On the other hand, it also means that we can just drop another blaze caller here. Kill the 4-4. Hit this one down. And we still have a kind of a strong board. Next turn then with the Frost Lich Jaina. We are just um, stealing life back. Which would normally allow us to go back to full life. I do not think that he is killing all two blaze callers. It's highly unlikely, to be honest. He would need, let's see, he would swipe, for example. Then well, he can trade swiping. Oh, he's playing Crazed Alchemist. Okay, that is, of course, helping him. Now, using the hero power and the slime. And he's still taking a six point of damage. Already down to 10 cards. Look at that. We are sitting here at 18 cards. He's at 10. Yeah, he's going for the attack. The blaze caller is down. We are still just dropping the frost lich. And this one is not helping him right now. So he's playing the ramp taunt route. Uh, so he, this one would have buffed every taunt minion on the board. But there's none. So there's no buff for him. And we just crushed him now. Hopefully with the frost lich Jaina. All our metals now have for the rest of the game um, lifesteal. So that's pretty cool. Allows you to get some life back easily, especially if you just consider that we have a Pyros here as a 10-10. That is not only 10 damage, but also 10 life steal. And he's still sitting there at 17 life, so it's not like he's out of reach for us. Okay, looks like he's hitting Water Elemental twice. Going for the hero power, so the three more. He's getting frozen, he's down to um, 14. So one attack from the Pyros and a Fireball is good enough for a kill. Oh, look at him. He's creating some stuff here. And it would be now cool to get something that is killing those. 
For sure. Uh, so how much do we have then? That is um, 21, right? Oh wait, 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 that is 2, 4, 6, 7. That is 21. Yeah, it is 21. For sure. So how about a nice block? And how about a tar creeper plus a water elemental? He's now at 4 mana, which is good for us, so he cannot do that much. At least two units are dying to the Tar Creeper. Another two might be dying to the Water Elemental. Plus, this is just providing us with healing, so if he's just going face, we are still healing back. Crypt Lord, 1 6. I mean, we can just kill this with a fireball, not a huge problem. Uh, down to 20. Intellect, uh, yeah. potentially, potentially. We are going Servant of Kalimos. Who Anomalos. This one is strong. He's dealing 8 damage to all minions. And 8 damage to all minions also means that we are healing back to more or less full life if the board is full. And the board right now is really full. So we are using then the fireball to kill this one. We are using the water mantle to kill one of his units, I think. Also, we could also just go face here, to be honest. So we are 23. We have the ice block. So that is near. Yeah, we're going face. So we are back to 23, he's at 11, have 7 mana. And if he's not killing the units, he's also in danger of dying here. Yeah? We have 7 damage already on the board. So he needs to be careful. Tar Creeper, which would allow us to get another water elemental on the board. And it's just going face again. Just loves to go face. So we're down to 8. Canologist. We're just dropping the ice block, man. Just going for that. So Anomalos is coming. We will then use the Icy Touch here on the Water Elemental. And we're just spawning another Water Elemental. Because that is also working for your own units. So you can then activate the Ice Block. But on the other hand, the Anomalos is of course killing the whole board. And we are then healing back to full life. If he's not doing that, then we are just crushing him because he's probably just dying. What's your plan now? That was kind of stupid with the Anomalos on the board. If he if he's not thinking that we have an Ice Block, then of course it's good for him. But we have an Ice Block, so it doesn't matter what he's doing. It's just activating the Ice Block. And we can use the Anomalos here to kill everything. We are healing back to full life. And then uh, potentially just dropping this one. I mean, there's also a chance that we are just killing the mana trend somehow. Yeah, but he's, he's killing this one. All right. So, there you go. Everything is getting crushed and we are back to full life. Blizzard. This would have been so much better earlier. Anyway, Pyrus is coming. He's sitting at 11. We have... 10 on the board, we have our Icy Touch, so that is 11 in total. He needs the armor then, or he needs to kill the Pyrus. Spreading Plague, which is kinda helping him. On the other hand, if we have something to clear this one, he's dying. Babbling Book. Hmm. Are we trying this one, or are we going Intellect? 12 cards to go. I think we're going Babbling Book first. That is uh, just a Volcanic Potion. So then I think we are using the Canologist. Getting a... Oh wait, we have already played? Oh, we have played the counter spell earlier, right? I thought there was still a counter spell in deck. Ah, oh, damn it. And the Intellect giving us a Glyph here, giving us another Volcanic Potion. We of course using the Glyph. Getting a Fireball for two. Oh boy, problem is... That is costing us one too much, a uh, two too much. So we would also need the Icy Touch. Let's just let's still go for the fireball. Push the damage in his face. He's down to one life. We could have played this one here, by the way, if we um, if we were playing for the intellect first and then the glyph. I was forgetting that we have already played two secrets. So it would have been then enough to kill him. Another breeding plaque. Which is okay. Power of the wild. And he needs to take the armor, otherwise he's just dying to our hero power. Oh. 
and there's a fireball and he's also dying to a fireball of course so let's just play the fireball for the face and we are clearing this taunt druid man 